Welcome back to the channel Gadgets for Gentlemen. In today's video, I'm going to give you a quick look at a fantastic dive watch by Longines. This watch has been launched recently, so I had the opportunity to have a quick look at the Longines Legend Diver Watch, which is a reinterpretation of a 1960s dive watch. This current watch comes in two sizes, a 42 millimeter version and a 36 millimeter version. Today with us, we have a 36 millimeter version, uh, which comes in six different uh, color variations. There is a version with a red dial and a matching red synthetic strap, a black dial with a young cow split leather strap, there's a version with a black dial and a Milanese metal bracelet. There's a version with a white mother of pearl dial and white calf leather strap. There's a version with a blue dial, which looks fantastic, with a matching blue leather calf strap. And here today with us, we have the beige dial with beige synthetic strap. So let's have a closer look and this uh, watch box is just really incredible. But first, wristwatch check. Today I'm wearing the Omega Seamaster 300 that I purchased in Spain. Big shout out to Adil Yojeros, to Mr. Santos for making that uh, watch deal possible. Really fantastic watch. And we will compare this watch also to the Omega because Longines and Omega are in the same family, the same company called Swatch. Omega is a bit uh, more expensive compared to Longines, but both of them are uh, luxury entry-level uh, time pieces. So beautiful box. This box is like super heavy. So this is the outer box. Let's open it up. And uh, first of all, there is a beautiful uh, book with the uh, story of outstanding achievement by Longines. What I found out is Longines is one of the oldest watch brands. It's older than Rolex. It is older than Omega. Uh, what I really love about Longines is a Second World War uh, wristwatch. Beautiful piece. I'll try to see if I can find a photo and put it in here. So Longines, I don't have any uh, watches by Longines. We have a beautiful holder here for booklet warranty papers. Uh, but let's just have a look at the box. As you can hear, we have a wooden box, I think, with a leather uh, strap. So let's lift this out of the box. Uh, as I told you, there's a little pool tap with warranty papers. Talking about warranty, what I found on the website, there is a five-year warranty. Let's take the box out of the outer box and again, put that to the side. So here we have a beautiful box. And it's quite remarkable because Longines is not the most expensive. Uh, we're talking here about a watch that retails uh, 2,420 euros. And it comes with a beautiful presentation. I noticed with the purchase of my Omega, the presentation also with a wooden box was just crazy, crazy beautiful. But this watch box does really uh, also look gorgeous. So there we go. Let's open up this box and let's have a closer look. As stated, there is a five-year warranty. There is a silicon balance uh, spring. And it also reads that it has magnetic uh, resist resistant. So here it reads the Longines Legend Diver. And there we have it. Let me take out uh, the watch and let's have a closer look. So first thing that comes uh, to mind is a synthetic strap with a leather strip a beautiful buckle with the uh, Longines logo and that kind of pattern that I see here on the on the buckle uh, we can also find at the crown as you can see here to me that pattern looks uh, quite similar so be really beautiful details so we have a beige synthetic strap that matches with a beige dowel there is a bit of a, a lacquered outer bezel uh, the bezel, unlike, for example, the Omega, is not controlled by turning the bezel uh, from the outside. But this bezel is uh, controlled using the top crown, which is screwed down 
we unscrew it and that way we can rotate the inner bezel and then the uh, second crown is the regular crown for adjusting the time so as you can see we have very flat hands we have a beautiful uh, printed dial there's a date wheel complication at the three o'clock and as you can see we have very small dimensions so this is a 36 millimeter watch and this is the original fabric strap and let's have a closer look at the watch so what we have here we have lugs they, they really curve down and here at the case back we can see that legend diver beautiful uh, details on the case back i think this is a 300 meter water resistant uh, watch and now the sun comes in on that dial and we have a look at that beautiful strap and dial let me go over my uh, notes quickly um, there is a scratch resistant sapphire crystal that is domed as you can see here um, it's it's not not very tall but it is domed um, also what i notice is the uh, the case the case actually is very very thin it's just a crystal that makes the total uh, thickness a bit thicker and also that decoration here in the case back makes it a little bit thicker but all in all what i can say is that the movement in this watch must be very very thin because it's a very thin watch there are several layers of anti-reflective coating screw down case back we have a lock distance of 19 millimeters which means finding um, a strap for this watch can be tough. Uh, my friend didn't like this uh, synthetic strap, so he bought a very beautiful uh, silk cloth uh, strap. I think this is a Zulu diver strap. I will uh, insert a photo. Um, so he, he matched it up with this strap. I'll leave a link in the description. Um, so 19 millimeters is not the most common you know lug width for watches but it is doable and i think with a 36 millimeter diameter it 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 is quite appropriate 18 millimeters would have been a little bit easier in terms of strap choice but for me 19 millimeters is not a bad thing so thickness according to longines is only 11.90 millimeters so under 12 millimeters from uh, tip to toe and exactly it is water resistant to 30 bars so 300 meters with this with this thickness 300 meters and um, that is the same with this omega but as you can see the omega it looks a bit thicker weight only uh, 62.9 grams on this specific synthetic strap there is painted arabic num numerals and indices and what i think is quite uh, sad honestly is we can only find loom uh, dots on the hour markers, but not on the minute uh, indices, which I think is a little bit um, uh, a, p a pity because I think with all these uh, minute indices as well as the, uh, the bezel, it will be so nice if that really uh, glows in the dark, but it's just the hands and the hour markers, unfortunately. Swiss Superluminova, in-house movement the caliber l592 i didn't test it but it has a self-winding mechanical movement vibration 28,800 vibrations per hour power reserve of 45 hours uh, it does allow for hacking yeah so that is some of the details but i think most importantly is how does it wear on the wrist what does it look like so let me take off the omega so let's put the beautiful Omega to the side. Uh, my wrist, uh, six and a quarter inch wrist. So I have a small wrist and I think this 36 millimeter looks quite nice. Um, if you have larger wrists, you can also go for the 42 millimeters. Both of these dimensions are quite uh, historically uh, accurate. I think there was a 37 millimeter uh, version in the past as well as a uh, 42 millimeter of the Legend Diver. This is really somehow uh, true to um, the uh, original pieces from the 60s. And what made this particular watch unique in that era was the um, rotating bezel using the top crown, as well as a construction with the case back, 
called uh, a, a, a compression diver that made the seal of the watch uh, water resistant tougher when you go deeper in the water. So at the time this watch was really an innovation. Now let me uh, show you how the uh, crown works for the bezel. Rotate the bezel using that top crown and then we can fix it by pulling putting the crown back in position and screwing it down. Very easy. And the beauty of this mechanism is you can't knock the bezel and change the um, timing of the bezel. Unlike, for example, with some dive watches that if you bang the uh, bezel, then your timekeeping just um, doesn't work anymore. So again, there we have the Omega. It's my favorite watch at the moment. And here we have the um, the Legend Diver, and you can see that's quite a difference in terms of size. The Legend Diver also reminded me just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of my Seiko 5 watch because of that beige, beige dial and that beige, uh, also synthetic fabric strap. So there we have it uh, side by side. Also uh, a small dimensions, this uh, Seiko 5, just for your reference. Uh, also, these accessories, they are by Vario. There's links in my descriptions. Really nice for storing your watch. The Legend Diver also reminded me a little bit of my Oris. Also, a very heritage-inspired dive watch. This is a skin diver uh, because of that fabric strap and also because of those details on the dial. I can see some resemblance with the Oris 65, 65, I think. That's the name of this uh, watch. There's a video in the archives on my channel. This one only 100 meters water resist. And finally, I also wanted to show you the Glycine, which is a 200 meter dive watch, but also with that thinness that really reminded me of the Legend Diver, just how thin this wears on the wrist. So that is just a quick look at the Longines Legend Diver 36 millimeter. And on YouTube, I didn't see much uh, close-ups of this watch yet because it's, it's, it's quite new. And um, especially in this color combination, I haven't found it yet on YouTube. So uh, I thought, let's just um, shoot a video and show you what the watch is all about. What I noticed from wearing this a couple of days is I think the proportions are just very, very nice, really beautiful. The dowel is nice. I like the, the shininess of that Tive bezel, that lacquered black is really nice in combination with that almost patina, gold, yellow, inner dial, that, that gradient inner dial. And also what I appreciate is the dive bezel, it's sloping down. So it has a bit of a 3D effect, as you can see here, especially when you look at it under that domed sapphire crystal. So all in all, I think for the price point, this is a nice piece. Personally, I gravitate more towards uh, Tudor Black Bay for its looks, but I think for a 36 millimeter, a uh, very authentic dive watch, this is a beautiful piece. Welcome to the loom check. And let's charge the loom a little bit. And let's have a closer look. As you can see with the Longine, we can see a loom on the bezel, on the 12 o'clock position. All the individual hour markers are loomed, the minute hand and the hour hand, but not the seconds. So no loom on the seconds. As we can see with the Omega, it's much brighter. Even the glycine is uh, bright. So what I can say is the uh, Oris, it's, it's quite bright. The Longines is not bright, the Loom. Omega is uh, impeccable. And also the Glycine is quite visible actually. So there we go. One, two, three. So as you can see, it's, it's visible enough to read the hour, but the other dive watches, they are a bit stronger. I will wrap up this video now. I will leave you with some images wearing this watch uh, in day-to-day -day practice. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, consider 
uh, giving it a like, uh, subscribing to my channel, leave a comment if you want. Uh, thank you for watching, have a great day and see you soon. Thank you.